Ash Fortuna. Once there lived a king and a queen. This king and queen had seven daughters, and the youngest was called Sfortuna. A terrible war broke out, and the king was defeated. His enemies took his throne and threw him in prison. Now that he was imprisoned, his family were very poor. The queen was forced to move out of the palace, and she and her seven daughters had to live in a run-down shack. Things went from bad to worse for them. They were so poor, it was a wonder that they had anything to eat at all. One day, a man selling fruit walked past the shack. The queen invited him in and bought some figs. Just then, an old beggar woman appeared, asking for a little money. Oh, granny, said the queen, if I could, I'd give you as much as you wanted, but I can't because I'm poor too. You're poor too? How's that? asked the old woman. Oh, granny, don't you know? I'm the queen of Spain. They took my husband's throne and I was left without a penny. You poor dear. Now I understand. But do you know why things are going so badly for you? It's because one of your daughters is cursed. As long as you live under the same roof, fortune will never smile on you. So I have to send one of my daughters away. Indeed you do, your majesty. And which is the one who is cursed? The one who sleeps with her hands crossed over her chest. Tonight, light a candle and watch over your daughters in their beds. One of them will have her hands crossed. You must drive her away. If you do, your country will be returned to you. At midnight, the queen lit a candle and took a look at her daughters. None of them seemed to have their hands crossed, but after a long time, she suddenly realized. One of them was sleeping with her hands crossed, the youngest of them all, Svotuna. Oh, my sweet girl, whispered the queen sadly. Is it you I must drive away? As she said this, Svotuna woke up and saw that her mother's eyes were filled with tears. What's wrong? she asked. Nothing, my sweet, but an old woman came, and she gave me a warning. She said that fortune will not smile on us until I drive away my cursed daughter, the one who sleeps with her hands crossed. And that cursed daughter is you. Is that why you're crying? asks Fortuna. Then I'll get dressed and leave this minute. She put on her clothes packed up a bundle, and set off. She walked and walked until she reached a lonely spot. There she found an old cottage. When she listened, she could hear that inside the cottage some women were weaving. She peeped through the door. One of the weavers looked up. Would you like to come in? I'd like that very much, my lady, answered Sfortuna. And will you be our servant? I will, my lady. And with that, Sfortuna started cleaning the whole cottage. In the evening, the weavers said to her, We're going out now. We'll lock the door from outside, and you must lock it from inside as well. When we get home, open the door for us, but watch out that nobody steals all the silk we have made. And then they left. Just around midnight, Sfortuna woke up with a start. She could hear the snipping of scissors, and she saw an old woman cutting all the silk the weavers had made into little pieces. This old woman was the girl's fate. The next day, the weavers came home again. They unlocked the door from the outside, and Sfortuna unlocked it from the inside. But as soon as the women stepped into the cottage, scattered all over the floor, they saw a dreadful sight. Shame on you, they cried. This is how you thank us for our kindness. Get out. And they chased her away, kicking her to make her run faster. 
and so the poor cursed girl walked on. She passed through many villages, and in one she stopped at a shop and asked for a bite to eat. The shopkeeper's wife took pity on her, and after giving Sfortuna a piece of bread, a little cheese and a glass of wine, she even made her a bed for the night among the sacks in the storeroom. When the shopkeeper came home, they all had dinner, and then they went to bed. But in the middle of the night, the man and his wife awoke to a terrible noise. The barrels in the storeroom were lying on their sides, and the wine was spilled all over the floor. The shopkeeper ran in and saw the girl lying in bed, groaning loudly. "'Shame on you!' he cried. "'What have you done?' He grabbed a stick and beat her with it, and then he chased her away. The poor girl ran off with tears in her eyes. She had no idea where to go or who to turn to for help. She walked and walked until one day she came to a village where she saw a washerwoman. "'What are you staring at?' asked the washerwoman. "'I'm just roaming the world,' replied Sfortuna. "'Can you wash clothes?' "'I can, my lady.' "'Then you can stay here and help me. "'I'll scrub. You'll rinse.' And with that, the poor girl started rinsing the soapy clothes. After that, she hung them up to dry. When the clothes were dry, she took them down. Then she patched them, starched them, and finally ironed them. Well, these clothes belonged to a prince, and when the washerwoman returned them to the palace, he was delighted with them. Mother Francesca, said the prince, this is the finest work you have ever done for me. I must reward you for it. And he gave the woman ten gold coins. Mother Francesca went straight to the shop. With the ten gold coins, she bought a beautiful dress for the young girl and a big bag of flour. When she got home, she baked a loaf of bread and two lovely aniseed pretzels. Just to look at those pretzels would make your mouth water. The next day, the washerwoman said to Sfortuna, Take these two aniseed pretzels to the beach. That's where my fate lives. Shout out three times, Hey, Mother Francesca's fate! After the third time, she will appear. When she does, give her my best wishes, and then ask where you can find your own fate. She's sure to tell you. As fast as she could, Sfortuna hurried to the beach. Hey, Mother Francesca's fate! Hey, Mother Francesca's fate! Hey, Mother Francesca's fate! The next moment, Mother Francesca's fate appeared. The girl gave her the washerwoman's best wishes and offered her one of the pretzels. Then she asked where she could find her own fate. Listen well, and I'll tell you what to do, replied Mother Francesca's fate. Walk along that path. Follow it until you reach a river. On the river bank, you will see an old witch. Greet her politely and give her your other pretzel. That witch is your evil fate. She'll be very unfriendly, but don't let that bother you. Just give her the pretzel and then go back home. Sfortuna set off along the path. When she reached the river, she saw a horrible old witch. The woman was the dirtiest, smelliest, ugliest old witch you could imagine. Sfortuna felt sick, but she took out the aniseed pretzel and said, Mother Fate, please accept my gift. Leave me in peace, snapped the witch. I don't want your pretzel. And then she turned her back on the girl. Sfortuna put the pretzel down on the riverbank and went back home. The next day was Monday, and there was more washing to do. Mother Francesca soaked the clothes and scrubbed them. Sfortuna rinsed the clothes and hung them up to dry. When they were dry, she patched them and ironed them, and then Mother Francesca put them into a basket and took them to the palace. When the prince saw his clothes, he was even more delighted than before. 
Mother Francesca, he smiled, this is the finest work you have ever done for me. And he gave her another ten gold coins. Just like before, Mother Francesca bought a big bag of flour and baked two more aniseed pretzels. Take these pretzels to your fate, Sfortuna. Then cut her nails, scrub her clean and comb her hair. If she struggles, hold her down. Well, before that, there were still clothes to wash. When they were finished, Mother Francesca took them to the palace. The prince was about to get married, so he was very pleased to see that his clothes had been washed so nicely. As a reward, he now gave the washerwoman twenty gold coins. Mother Francesca went back to the shop. She bought some more flour, and then she chose a pretty dress, a petticoat, a fine shawl, a comb, and many other nice things, all for the young girl's fate. Back home, she baked some more pretzels, and when they were ready, Sfortuna took them straight to the riverbank. Hey, Mother Fate, she shouted, I've brought you some pretzels. And when the witch appeared, the girl cut her nails, scrubbed her all over with a soapy sponge, and combed her hair. Listen, Sfortuna, said the witch, you've been very kind to me. In return, let me give you this and she handed the girl a little box. Sfortuna took the box and raced back home to Mother Francesca, but when they opened it, all they found was a pink ribbon. Ah, I should have guessed as much, cried Sfortuna disappointedly, and she threw the box into the back of the cupboard. The next week, they did the washing as usual, and Mother Francesca took the basket of clothes to the palace. This time, however, the prince didn't look happy at all. "'What's wrong, prince?' asked the washerwoman. "'Everything's wrong,' he replied. "'I wish to get married, but my fiance wants a pink ribbon to wear on her wedding dress. "'I've sent men all over the country to buy a ribbon that is just the right colour, "'but they can't find a single one.' "'Is that all you're upset about?' said Mother Francesca. "'Don't worry.' Leave it to me. And what did she do? She hurried home, found Sfortuna's ribbon at the back of the cupboard, and took it to the palace. The prince's fiance said that the ribbon was perfect, and the prince was overjoyed. You have saved my wedding, Mother Francesca. Your ribbon is worth its weight in gold, and I will give you exactly that much. He took out a set of scales put the ribbon into one pan, and poured gold coins into the other one. But even when the second pan was overflowing with coins, the one with the ribbon in it still didn't rise. It's unbelievable, cried the prince. No ribbon could weigh as much as this. Where did you get it? The question took Mother Francesca by surprise, and she had no choice but to tell him the whole story. After that, the prince naturally wanted to meet Sfortuna. Mother Francesca dressed the girl in her best clothes and took her to the palace. When she entered the throne room, Sfortuna bowed politely. The prince greeted her and offered her a seat. Then he asked, Who are you? I am Sfortuna, the youngest daughter of the King of Spain. My father's enemies took his throne and threw him in prison. I was cursed by fate, and I had to leave home. The people I met bullied me and beat me. And she told him everything that had happened to her. The prince immediately called for the weavers, whose silk had been cut to pieces by Sfortuna's evil fate. How much was that silk worth? Two hundred gold coins, your highness. The prince took out two hundred gold coins and gave it to the women. Then he said, This poor girl is a princess, and you beat her. Don't forget, you should never hurt anyone. You may go. Next he called for the shopkeeper. How much was that wine worth? Three hundred gold coins, your highness. The prince gave the man three hundred gold coins and said, You beat a princess, 
Don't let it happen again. You may go. After that, he sent his fiancée away because he no longer liked her that much. He married Sfortuna and made Mother Francesca a lady-in-waiting. Let's leave the prince to his happiness and see what happened to Sfortuna's mother. As soon as Sfortuna had left home, the queen's fortunes improved. So much so that her brothers and cousins arrived with a huge army and drove their enemies away. The queen moved back into the palace with her other daughters, and they lived there very comfortably. But their hearts ached for Sfortuna. They didn't even know if she was still alive. They searched for her everywhere, and asked everyone if they had seen the girl. Finally, they found out where she was. How? Well, it was thanks to the prince. When he heard that Sfortuna's mother had got her country back, he sent a messenger who told the queen everything. You can imagine how excited she was, and she immediately set off with her knights and ladies-in-waiting to visit the prince's palace. As soon as the queen saw her long-lost daughter, she threw her arms around the girl and hugged her and hugged her. After that, Sfortuna's sisters appeared. None of them had ever felt such joy. The whole country celebrated the family's reunion, and they all lived happily ever after.